Good morning. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. Welcome to 30 minutes of my day. Happy Wednesday. Hope you are all doing well. I was actually, I got a little bit of time here um, before I have an appointment to go to at 11 o'clock. But the joy of living in a small town is my appointment is five minutes away. So, and today the roads are clear. So I know I can probably leave in about, with about seven minutes lead time and I'll be fine. <laughs> um, it's snowing here today. They told us it was going to rain, but it's snowing. I like rain. You don't have to shovel rain. So I'm still working here on, um, on Tallulah. Yesterday I did a live stream, which was such a pleasure. I keep forgetting I have that option and uh, gosh, it, it, it really lifted my spirit. So thank you to everyone who joined in and, and I was able to keep up a bit with the chatter. When you live stream, if you're not aware, you have to sort of set up a separate screen so that you can read the, um, the chatting that's going on while you're working. And that can be hard for me. I'm not the best multitasker, <laughs> but gosh, it was lovely. So thank you. Thank you to all. That was, for me, a big boost to the spirits. Um, this is what we worked on, in case you didn't uh, see it afterwards, and I don't blame you. It was quite lengthy. It was about, ended up being about 80 minutes long. Today won't be 80 minutes long. And uh, I wanted to do a sort of a lavender-themed collage, and this is what I ended up with. There are two uh, very vintage stickers, I dare say antique. They, I think even antique dealers are sort of throwing aside that 100-year rule now. Um, anyhow, these are like, I think they're about 75 years old because they're from the 40s. This one up here and this one down here. And they've got beautiful uh, sort of lavender lilac colored flowers on them. So I put... I put the Irish one up here and I aimed it so that the luck is blow, flowing down on, on whoever is underneath to receive it. And this lady looks like she's there to receive it. And this young lady is there. And then again, like with the Mr. Coleman's Mustard Man, I put in a tuck spot and I did it purposefully. So this hangs out over the side and then a little, um, a little bow. I, I'm trying to add more bows uh, to um, to be like my uh, beloved Lucy Maud Montgomery and what she did with her very own actual Victorian scrapbooks that she kept. Uh, these, she loved putting in these little bows. She put in a lot of dried flo dried flowers and pressed pressed flowers. And I right now I don't have any here, but now I definitely. Uh, in, I'm intrigued for our next flowering season to start pressing some flowers so that I can start including them. She loved to put a little twig of a pressed flower and then glue a little bow over top of it. And you know what? I, I want my I want my journals to sort of have a spirit of authenticity to them. Obviously, they're recently made. They're not old, but I do use old things. So I'm hoping that it's a sort of a tip of the hat to the wonderful people who did keep such kinds of commonplace, pleasurable, scrapbooky kind of books. So yeah, so that was my lavender one, a fussy cut flower back here off of a piece of scrapbook paper. And uh, this little tuck spot, I liked her she kind of reminded me of, you know, Anne Shirley, but without red hair. So maybe she, maybe that's Lucy Maud herself there. Um, or Tallulah on the front cover. Uh, this is, I, I did a little bit of work on the back because these are sticking out over the edge. Now, I think they look very tidy and nice, but I still wanted something a little distracting over here. So she's actually out of the... Um, out of the original text block, I've got quite a few photos from the text block, block that I'm having fun with. I chose her. She kind of looks like she's checking her deodorant there. <laughs> How many of us have done that? 
So um, I thought she looked very lovely. And her elbow covered up. There was one, this lady's bun was sticking out over the edge and the underside was um, not very attractive because of course I cut her out of a book. So uh, this young lady's elbow is covering up and sort of camouflaging that. And then I gave her a little Victorian um, fan as if she's she's going out for the evening, checking her deodorant and uh, almost ready to go. And this, of course, I love. And thank you to everyone for the, um, the cheering squad when I was nervous to use a staple. It's just a tag off my husband's dry cleaning. But it's a lavender color and it's got numbers. So, you know, how cool. And normally... Dry clean tags are uh, stapled. So we stapled it. Anyhow, so I'm very happy with how this turned out. This is still all available. So if the new owner wants to cover it with tissue and use it for journaling on, they can do it. If they want to keep collaging things, um, it's there and ready. Now today, I, I, I want to make... I want to make more use of all the really fun photos that were in this book. So I want to put a little sneaky one in behind this tip out here. And uh, I've got to make sure my timer is going because I don't see it. Is it going? Where are you going? Yes, you're going. Yes. Okay. Um, so I want to hide, I want it to be sort of like peekaboo, and then there's a little, a little something happening behind here, but it still leaves, it leaves that much room for the new owner to have some fun space that I haven't totally monopolized um, this journal. And I think what I want to do, I love this picture out of the book. She does not look very impressed, and he looks so hopeful. <laughs> So, and it says down here, will you uh, accept this slight token? And she replies, I might from some men. <laughs> I love it. So, so they are going to go. I'm going to separate them. I'm going to fussy cut them and separate them so that they're inside there when you open it up and that there's a little private conversation going on back there. So let's, um, I want to save this. I'd like to be able to um, save that the little conversation and use it as a word snippet somewhere. I love that in real life, her real name is Minnie. My father-in-law had a sister named Minnie. <laughs> Gone are the days when we... Name our daughters many. Alrighty, so we're going to fussy cut this uh, this hopeful young man. I don't suspect this will take very long today, but knowing me, I'll still use up my whole thirty minutes. It's all right. I'm not sure whether I will cut out the um, the little windows. I wish I could, but I tried with the little, um, you know, secret deodorant lady here. <laughs> and this paper um, is a little bit mushy and it tends to, even though I put a new blade in my X-Acto, it still wanted to just tear rather than do a nice clean cut. So I have a feeling I am going to take a lesson from that and leave those little windows um, just as they are. But on the other hand, I want to put something behind them. So I'm going to fussy cut and I'm going to think hard about this. Maybe I can somehow fit my scissor blade these are really tiny and delicate. 
And maybe, maybe if I'm careful, I could fit my scissor blades in there and cut those little windows out because that just really adds um, a little whimsy to a collage when you've got a photo in it and you can see the background uh, through a little window. Love that. Now I'm wondering, I'm just, I'm thinking about whether to pause the camera while I do this fussy cutting because it really eats up a lot of time. And fussy cutting is really not a phenomenal skill. It's just something that, you know, the more you do it, the more comfortable you are with it. So you know what, I may, um, I may pause, especially because I think I'm going to sneeze, and we'll see. Okay. I had my sneeze, <laughs> and I was able to get um, <clears throat> these two fussy cut. So uh, they're going to go right there. So when you open it up, there's this little little private tete-a-tete -tete happening here. Now, I want to just do a tiny little bit uh, around the edges because the paper core is showing. You'll see here, I was able to get in with my scissors with these tiny little points and just, I got most of them. Some of them, there we go. I'm not going to try that. If it was, if this was, um, tougher paper, boy, I would take great pleasure in that challenge. <laughs> I would really love to be able to get all the little slats of that rocking chair cut out. But I got a few and that, that will really make a difference. Now what I will do is, so that it recedes into the back, I will use my Distress ink and shade it a little bit brown. It, it, it's not white right now, but it's gray. But the background is sort of a beigey brown. And just by shading that, it will actually help it to camouflage and recede a bit. So just go in very, very gently and, and lightly. And that way, when you do glue it down, it it won't be so evident that <clears throat> that it didn't get um, trimmed out. But a lot of them I was able to I was able to get done and I'm happy about that. Gosh, this is cute. I oh, what are you doing there? I love when I get um, when I find something that just gets me giddy. <laughs> it's, it's such a cute idea. And I love when you can have a little page in a journal that makes you, that makes you snicker. <laughs> I do. I guess that's why I like those old laxative ads. And, you know, they make me laugh. <laughs> How am I for time? I'm good. Okay. I have to be out of here by, I got half an hour. Well, I only have, I can't see my screen. Oh, I've got 16 more minutes. So we're, we're all good. That leaves me a few minutes to brush my teeth and, and look respectable. So for example, I was able to get uh, this little window cut out uh, with this arm, not that tiny one. So I am just going to use tiny, tiny, a little bit of ink and just, just make that a little bit beige. There we go. Now, I'm, I've got an idea. I hope it works. We'll see. I found, I was actually looking for some scrapbook paper that maybe looked like Victorian wallpaper and I didn't find any, but I found this sheet of scrapbook paper 
I'm not sure whose it is. I get them in, you know, taped together in bags at my thrift stores, but it's so pretty. It wouldn't surprise me if it's Tim Holtz, but I don't, I don't know for sure. And I want this postcard. So I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to freehand it, which is rare for me when doing something with straight lines, but I don't mind this old card having maybe a bit of a not so even edge because they do get beat up over the years. take a moment later today when I get back and um, clean all my scissor blades. They, they all have quite a bit of buildup of 3-in-1 and Fabri-Tac. So usually every once in a while I'll just get some cotton pads, soak them in acetone and give them a good cleaning. Just the blades. Don't get any acetone in your joint there because there's lubricating glue in there and you don't want to clean that out. That's doing a job. Um, and I will even, I'll clean it, clean it, clean it with a cotton swab and then I will actually even use the scissors and cut through the cotton swab to make sure I've got any, any of the glue off the edge of the blades. It's just cotton, so it won't hurt your scissors. There we go. I might save that. That could go into something. All right. Gee, guess what we're going to do? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Ink? told my husband, bury me with my distress ink. I'm sure there's a crafting club up in heaven somewhere. I'm going to need, I'm going to need my Fisker scissors and some distress ink. Maybe some art glitter glue. And I'll be good to go. I'll get there and say, where's the crafting club? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> All right, so... I want it that way. Here's what I'm thinking. Hold on. I better pull this over because I don't know if I'm in screen or not. Let's see. I wanted a little background, but I also wanted sort of um, to be able to make these into tuck spots. Oh, he looks wonderful. And I imagine that this... Sorry, I thought I could hear my phone going. It's in the other room charging. All my outlets are full in my craft room here. So if I charge my phone, I need to uh, do it in another room. So sorry about that. Um, I imagine that this, is, you know, because it's to a Miss Ella Patterson, and I'm imagining that he's saying, I will be by this afternoon to, to see you, sweetest. I hope that you will meet with me. I don't know if that's what I'm imagining that he's sending to her. Because they really did used to just send postcards. I have some postcards from my great aunt to my grandmother that she literally, the postcard says, I just wanted to let you know I got home okay last night. Uh, we'll see you again next week. And it was from a town like 10 minutes away. So... You know, obviously, no telephones. Wanted to let the family know that she arrived safely back home. And uh, it was their method of communication since we didn't have phones. So I, oh, I rather like that. And then 
this could be the tuck spot if I just glue around there. Now I did wonder to add a little a little bit of fun color. I'm wondering if I've got a tiny little bouquet and actually change his bouquet of flowers to color. And I know I have some teeny tiny ones. These are fussy cut from a book of Victorian, um, little Victorian ephemera. And I was lucky enough, um, a lovely subscriber named Juana messaged me and said, I have these books. Would you like them? I'd love to send them to you. And I'm so glad, Juana, if you're watching, I every day I'm I every day I'm grateful for you because I think every day I get into this little bin and I thoroughly enjoy finding a little a little something to uh, put onto. I don't think any of them are tiny enough. I thought I had some teeny teeny tiny ones. Now I may I may cut one down and fussy cut some flowers out of. Oh, there's a whole bouquet. Anyway, wish it was a little smaller. I don't need it to match perfectly because that I think that's part of the fun and charm and sort of a ha 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 <laughs> when you make a collage that's a little whimsical. No, no, I think I am going to fussy cut those little flowers out of that and and glue that on as his bouquet. So here, I'll show you. See how tiny it already is? I'm going to fussy cut those pink ones out. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit closer with this white edge, try and get as much of it as much of it off, but it's got quite a detailed edge here. So I will be relying on my distress ink to um, camouflage that edging, and it will. If I sneeze again, I apologize ahead of time. I think I'm going to, oh, hold on. <coughs> oh, pardon me sure why all the sneezing this morning. Oh well, clears out your brains. So I want some of these leaves. Let's see. I might just chuck this whole idea. Ah, I like it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And she looks really miffed. And she... Maybe there was just something she did not like about this young man. Because these flowers and his earnest little face... I think she should give him a second chance. There. All right. So now I've got to decide how this is going to go down. And I'm also trying to decide whether I want to do a little lace edge on this. Will that hide it, though, so that it's a little surprise? How big is that? That is six and a half. So if I go to six and a half, oh yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Let's do it. All right, Martha Stewart, where are you? I like my Martha Stewart one. I only have a few. I think I have three edges, edge, edge chompers. And this one's my favorite one. It's a little more delicate than the other ones I have. The other ones are 
kind of a bit chunkier. All right, let's see. So I always start mine flipping them out overward, over so that I don't lose that extra quarter inch. There we go. And then I flip it this way and continue in this way and I just simply match up the lace along the guideline here. So I match that up and then I make sure that this side is also matched up. And it works pretty good. And I just sort of plodge along here like this. There we go. I don't know any of you, if any of you watch uh, Lydia Bastianich, her cooking shows. I love her cooking shows. We had the great good fortune of going to one of her restaurants in New York City a few years ago. We had dinner at, uh, she has a restaurant named Philidia in New York. And we went on a Sunday evening and it, the weather was horrible, so it actually wasn't very busy. We took a cab over from our hotel. And on Sunday evenings at Felidia, back then, I'm not sure whether they still do it or not, but they had a fixed price 12 course Italian Sunday dinner. <laughs> and uh, we just thought, you know what, it's probably the only time we're going to be able to uh, have a dinner at. Um, at a Lydia Bastianich restaurant at Let's Just Go For It because it gave us a little sample of many of her foods on the menu. And it also included, like, even before ordering, we just walked in the door and they said, welcome to Felidia, and handed us both a cold, beautiful glass of Prosecco. It was just, we felt pampered and welcome from the second we walked in the door it was so lovely and uh so we had the 12 course dinner and every course was divine every single one and we tried our very best to pace ourselves. and thank goodness they the portions are purposefully not huge but they did say please feel free to ask for uh seconds if there's something you're particularly enjoying um, and one of them was a um, pesto lasagna. One of them, and I actually liked it this time, was it was either squid or octopus. And I usually don't enjoy that. And I'll tell you why. I, I love seafood, but I find people don't usually cook it very well. And it just tastes like you're chewing on a rubber band. This was utterly delicious. <laughs> utterly delicious. And... Uh, what else? Oh, there was, of course, um, a couple of different pastas, a soup, um, a salad. Um, now, I'm trying to remember. There was a beef, whether it was a tenderloin or I can't recall. It was delicious. The whole meal, we just didn't want it to end. We were enjoying it so much. And because it was quiet in there... Um, they were all just fussing over us, which was lovely. And they figured out that, you know, we're tourists. <laughs> we're Canadian, eh? <laughs> so quite friendly. And my husband is as much, if not more of a chatterbox than I am. And we'll talk to anyone. If you're friendly, we'll talk to you. We'll invite you home for dinner. <laughs> so that was our experience at Felidia in New York City. And um, anyhow, uh, back to my point, I was sad to see that her mother, who they call Grandma, her name's Erminia, um, who was, and she was on her show all the time, um, passed away last week. And I know she was over 100. So I was, uh, you know, I say that I'm sad because... I'm always sad for everyone who has to go on now without them. But for the person who passes, when you can have had a wonderful life and achieve such an age and have 
your life be mostly happy absolutely i don't know that anyone has ever lived on this earth and not had heartache um i haven't thought this out and i already folded it hold on i'm talking so much talk about talking too much you pro you are probably already knew Catherine's going to do this and she's going to really mess up so it might have to just be a tiny tuck spot because this is a fold it can't be a full tuck spot. Here I am thinking, oh, it'll be a full pocket. Aren't I smart? No. Hmm. Now I wonder if I can glue him down so that both sides could be a tuck. Hmm. Or else, yeah, it'll just be one a one-sided little tuck. Yeah, because he's going to stick out over the edge. So it's just going to have to be a small little tuck here. And that's okay. That's all right. Let's put her down here. I'm going to put him there. And he's sort of looking down. He's sort of in behind her. And she's sort of looking at the camera going, do you believe what I have to put up with? Seriously, look at the look on her face. <laughs> oh, gosh. She is not impressed. All right. I want, I love this postcard thing here. So. So he's there, hoping to win her heart with flowers. She's there. Maybe he should be there and she should be underneath. No, no, I like them both. I like them both on that. Now, of course, I cannot find the little bouquet that I cut out. Where'd it go? There it is. Anyhow, yeah, little Grandma Arminia apparently passed away peacefully at home last week. And uh, what a lovely, a lovely way to go when you have to, when, you, when your time's up and it's time to go. Now I want a little bit, a little bit of ink there. And I have inked you. Let's do this. I'm really enjoying taking my time with Miss Tallulah here. It's just been very soothing for me. Um, it's been a nice little distraction if I get time. I've spent so much time at the nursing home with my mother. Thank goodness able to get in. Um, but it's that's still stressful, right? The driving is stressful. The winter weather makes it even worse worrying about her so to come home and work on on this book what a peaceful respite 